In a draft survey, one of the most important values we determine during the initial draft survey is the ship's actual constant. Ship's constant represents the weight of all items permanently on board the vessel that are not included in the life ship. Things like spare parts, extra equipment, paints, ropes, stores, provisions, crew personal effects, and other materials that accumulate over time. Initial draft survey is carried out before any cargo operations begin. Its main purpose is to determine the ship's displacement and to calculate the ship's actual constant before the loading starts. Intermediate draft survey is taken during the cargo operation, usually when the ship is partially loaded or discharged. It helps determine how much cargo has already been loaded or discharged and how much is remaining to complete the operation. Final draft survey is conducted after all cargo operations are finished. At this stage, the ship's final displacement is calculated and the actual constant obtained from the initial survey is applied to accurately determine the total cargo loaded or discharged. This video covers only the initial draft survey, focusing on calculating the ship's actual constant while the constant is stated in a ship's stability booklet. That value is generally reliable only when the ship is new. As the vessel ages, the value of the ship's constant changes due to the accumulation of additional stores, spares, and equipment on board. Since this is an initial draft survey, the vessel is in ballast condition with no cargo on board. To begin, we first need to gather some essential data, starting with the apparent or observed drafts which are obtained through draft readings. In this scenario, these are the observed drafts. The port and starboard drafts differ slightly. The port drafts are greater, indicating the ship is slightly listing to port. Our first step is to determine the mean of forward, midship, and aft drafts. To do this, add the forward drafts port and starboard, then divide them by two. The mean forward draft is 4.79 meters. Apply the same procedure for midship and aft drafts. The mean midship draft is 5.23 meters, and the mean aft draft is 5.71 meters. This procedure is not necessary if both the port and starboard drafts are the same. To determine the apparent trim, take the difference between the mean aft draft and the mean forward draft. Simply subtract the lesser from the greater. The apparent trim is 0.92 meters by the stern, since aft draft is greater than the forward draft. After calculating the apparent main drafts forward, midship, and aft, including the apparent trim, the next step is to determine the drafts at their perpendiculars. Remember that in most vessels, the forward and aft draft marks are not positioned exactly at the perpendiculars. To confirm whether the draft marks are located at the perpendiculars or not, refer to the ship's stability booklet. Go to the Table of Contents and look for the section on Draft Marks Information. In this booklet, the details are found on page 20. From the diagram, we can see that the forward draft marks are located here, while the forward perpendicular is shown here. The distance between them is indicated as L sub F, which is 0 0.800 meters. It is clearly illustrated that the forward draft marks are positioned 0 0.80 meters from the forward perpendicular. In some manuals, the distance from draft marks to perpendiculars is referred to as a correction factor. Therefore, this distance is known as forward correction factor. Now for the aft draft marks, it is located along this line, while the aft perpendicular is shown here. The distance between them is indicated with L sub A, which is 5.400 meters. This is also referred to as the aft correction factor. For the midship draft marks, it is located exactly at midships, so the correction factor is zero.
The horizontal distance from forward perpendicular to aft perpendicular is called length between perpendiculars, which is 137.00 meters. Meanwhile, the horizontal distance from forward draft marks to aft draft marks is called length between draft marks, which is 130.800 meters. To determine the drafts at perpendiculars, let's first calculate the draft corrections using these formulas. For the forward draft correction, it is equal to the apparent trim, which is 0.92 meters, multiplied by the distance from forward draft marks to forward perpendicular, or forward correction factor, which is 0.800 meters, divided by length between draft marks, which is 130.800 meters. The forward draft correction is 0.00563 meters. For the aft draft correction, the same formula applies, but the apparent trim is multiplied by the aft correction factor. The aft draft correction is 0.03798 meters. The midship draft correction is zero, since the midship draft mark is exactly a midships. Next, apply draft corrections to apparent mean drafts to determine drafts at perpendiculars following these rules. The draft at forward perpendicular is equal to mean forward draft minus forward draft correction. We subtract forward draft correction since the ship is trimmed by the stern. The draft at forward perpendicular is 4.78437 meters. For the draft at aft perpendicular, it is equal to mean aft draft plus aft draft correction. We add the aft draft correction as stated in the rules when the ship is trimmed by the stern. The draft at aft perpendicular is 5.74798 meters. The draft at midships remains the same as the apparent mean midship draft since no correction is applied. Next, let's calculate the mean draft at perpendiculars and the true trim. Mean draft at perpendiculars is obtained by adding the draft at forward perpendicular and the draft at aft perpendicular, dividing the sum by 2. The mean draft at perpendiculars is 5.266175 meters. For the true trim, it is equal to draft at aft perpendicular minus draft at forward perpendicular. Simply subtract the lesser value from the greater. The true trim is 0.96361 meters by the stern. Next, let's calculate the quarter mean draft. Quarter mean draft is considered more accurate for extracting hydrostatic data such as the ship's displacement, TPC, MTC, and LCF because it takes into account hull deflection effects like hogging and sagging. I'll show you two methods to calculate the quarter mean draft. In the first method, calculate the mean of mean, which is equal to mean draft at perpendicular, plus draft at midship, divided by 2. The mean of mean is 5.24809 meters. Then, calculate the quarter mean draft by taking the sum of mean of mean, and draft at midship, then dividing by 2. The quarter mean draft is 5.23904 meters. The second method is simpler. The quarter mean draft is equal to 3 times draft at midship plus mean draft at perpendiculars, divided by 4. This also gives a quarter mean draft of 5.23904 meters, the same value as the first method. Next, let's extract the values of ship's displacement, LCF, and TPC from the hydrostatic table using the calculated quarter main draft. The first column of this hydrostatic table lists the draft in two decimal places, so the quarter mean draft to be used is 5.23 meters. The small draft increment, which is 0.00904 meter, will be applied later on.
At a draft of 5.23 meters, the ship's displacement is 11,184 tons. The TPC is 24 tons per centimeter, and the LCF is negative 3.59 meters. Since this displacement value corresponds only to the rounded draft of 5.23 meters, we need to determine the remaining displacement value for the corresponding draft increments. The displacement increment is obtained by multiplying the draft increment by 100 times TPC, where 100 is used to convert meters to centimeters since TPC is in tons per centimeter. The displacement increment is 21.70 tons. Adding this to the extracted displacement at 5.23 meters, we get a total displacement of 11,205.70 tons. This is now the ship's displacement at a quarter mean draft of 5.23904 meters. Next, let's calculate the first and second trim corrections. The formula for the first trim correction is true trim multiplied by LCF, then by TPC, and finally by 100, divided by the length between perpendiculars. The first trim correction is 60.60 tons. The rules for applying the first trim correction are as follows. If the ship is trimmed by the stern, follow the LCF sign. But if the ship is trimmed by the head, reverse the LCF sign. Since the ship is trimmed by the stern and the LCF is negative, so the first trim correction is also negative. Now for the second trim correction, this is the formula. But before proceeding, let's first determine the moment to chain a trim by a 1 cm difference or MTC difference. To determine the MTC difference, extract the MTC value from the hydrostatic table at a quarter mean draft of 5.23 meters plus 0.5 meters, which is 5.73 meters, and at a quarter mean draft of 5.23 meters minus 0.5 meters, which is 4.73 meters. We add and subtract 0.5 meter to the quarter mean draft to account for how the moment to change trim varies at slightly higher and lower drafts. This allows us to determine how the MTC changes across a small range of drafts. Now, at a draft of 5.73 meters, the MTC value is 182 ton meters per centimeter. And at a draft of 4.73 meters, the MTC value is 174 ton meters per centimeter. Subtracting both MTC values, the MTC difference is 8.00 ton meters per centimeter. So following this formula, where 50 is a constant value, the second trim correction is 2.71 tons. The rule for the second trim correction is always add, so the second trim correction is positive. Next, let's determine the ship's displacement corrected for trim. Apply the first and second trim correction to our tabulated displacement at quarter mean draft of 5.23904 meters, which is 11,205.70 tons. Subtract the first trim correction since it has a negative sign, and adding the second trim correction since it has a positive sign. The displacement corrected for trim is 11,147.81 tons. We apply trim corrections because the most common hydrostatic table provided on board was developed when the vessel floating in salt water on an even keel or zero trim. Since in this scenario the vessel is trimmed by the stern, so trim correction is necessary. This is also our final displacement if the ship is floating in salt water, but if not, then we need to apply a density correction to determine the final displacement. Let's assume that in this scenario, the vessel is floating in dock water, where the relative density is 1.021. So the next step is to determine the ship's displacement corrected for density, or final displacement, using this formula. The displacement corrected for trim is 11,147.81 tons. The dock water relative density is 1.021,
divided by the relative density of salt water. The final displacement is 11,104.31 tons. Since we have already our final displacement, let's proceed to the final step, calculating the ship's dead weight and actual constant. To determine the dead weight, subtract the light ship from the final displacement. The light ship value can be found in the ship's general particulars. The dead weight is 5,704.31 tons. If we subtract the ROBs from the dead weight, the remaining value is the ship's actual constant. In this scenario, let's assume that the total ROB is 5,477.31 tons. For the fuel oil, diesel oil, love oil, and other tanks related to engine compartment, communicate with Chief Engineer for the family values. Now the ship's actual constant is 227 tons. This value will be used on the vinyl draft survey. That's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.